going to have a look at a titration question there are no um so they're question one of the exam paper in section a the first question that you probably do on an exam and um it is an experiment question um so the titration question is always number one and um there's about seven or eight titrations one comes up every year you have to do two of the three experiments from section a so most people do question one titration and um, this titration looks at the washing soda so this is um na2co3 xh2o so it's um washing soda crystals it's sodium carbonate with water crystallization in it and a certain amount of water x times water we don't know exactly because it can vary um you do the titration with um hydrochloric acid and you get the numbers from your question and you you fill them in and figure out um i suppose this is a common question this is the common titration that people find difficult um it hasn't come up in a while in the leaving cert though so it's um quite quite um possible this year um as it was last year as well um, but if you look here at how to do it, so basically it's the sodium carbonate part of the washing soda crystal that is the active ingredient, if you like. So you can see here that it's the part of the washing soda that reacts with the hydrochloric acid. If you look at the question, it says that there is 2.50 grams per 250 centimeters cubed of the washing soda crystals there that are dissolved um, and then you can see there's a b c and d they're all looking at kind of some of the theory questions about how to weigh it out what precautions should you take what type, what what indicators should you use what are the color changes so they're all very straightforward theory questions um, for part e then though looking at the calculations so if we have a look here at um, part E, from the mean volume of the hydrochloric acid solution, calculate the concentration of sodium carbonate in the original solution in moles per litre and grams per litre. So what I like to do for these is I like to create a table where it says molarity, volume, then the actual number of moles, And the ratio so if we look at the question the molarity of the hydrochloric acid is 0 0.10 moles per liter if you look at the ratio you can get that from the balanced equation so there's a 2 there in front of the hydrochloric acid there's a 1 in front of the sodium carbonate so that's 2 is to 1 is the ratio. Um, from the question then as well, we can see that the average titration value, volume of hydrochloric acid is 21.6 centimeters cubed. And you can see that 25.0 centimeters cubed of the sodium carbonate was used. Um, so then if we work this out, what we will do is we'll say 0 0.10 moles per litre, but we don't have a litre, we've got 21.6 centimetres cubed. So we're going to go 0 0.10 divide by 1000 to get how many moles in 1 centimetre cubed and multiply by 21.6. And we'll get 2.16 by 10 to the minus 3. So that is the amount of the number of moles, the actual number of moles of hydrochloric acid present in the 21.6 centimeters cubed of the HCl. Now, because the ratio here, 2 is the 1, we're going to have to divide by 2. So if we divide by 2, we'll get 1.08 by 10 to the minus 3 moles of sodium carbonate must be present in the 25 centimeters cubed of it. So then we're going to go 0, 1.08 by 10 
to the minus 3. Divide this by 25, multiply by 1000 to get the number of moles per litre. And we get 0 0.0432 big M moles per litre. So every time that you do this kind of calculation, you will get it back into moles per litre. It's good to use a table because then you'll find the actual number of moles along the way. This method is by first principles. In the past, we used V1M1N1 equals V2M2N2. But it's not going to give you the actual number of moles along the way, which is sometimes something that they're asking for these days. So this is the moles per litre, and that's the answer for part one of this question. If you look at part two of the question, it says find this in grams per litre. So we need to work out the MR of Na2CO3. So if we look at Na2CO3 and we work out the MR, each of the sodiums, are 23, two, and then the carbon is 12, and the oxygen is 16, three sixteens. You get these values from the periodic table. Um, so this is the MR of sodium carbonate. You get 106 is what you get. And once you multiply the moles per liter by the MR, you'll get the grams per liter. And in this case, you get 4.58 grams per litre of the sodium carbonate present in that solution. So that completes part E of the calculation. You can see that we were able to use the um, moles per litre here of the sodium carbonate and multiply it by the MR to get the grams per litre. We go on to the second calculation part, you might say, on to part F. So this looks at the percentage of water crystallization in the crystals and the value of X, the average number of molecules of water in the formula above. So what we're going to do here is we're going to basically compare like with like. So if we've got, this is the original crystal including water and we've got 2.50 grams per 250. I'm going to multiply that by 4 so that we get 10 grams per litre. So we've got 10 grams per litre of the crystal and we just found out that of the active ingredient part we've got 4.58 grams per litre so we can compare like with like now because they're both in the same units of grams per litre so if we put the uh, mass of Na2CO3 all over the mass of total crystal Um, we're going to find the percentage of the active ingredient. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to say, we're going to subtract the active ingredient actually. We're going to say 10 minus 4.58 and we get 5.42 grams per litre which is responsible due to water. So what we're going to now do, if we want to find the, the percentage of water crystallization, is we're going to put the mass due to water all over the mass of the whole thing. So we're going to put 5.42 all over our 10 and multiply by 100. And we'll get 54.2% water of crystallization okay so 10 comes from here the total grams per litre of the 
entire crystal and we got the active part in grams per liter and we subtracted that from the 10 to get the mass due to water we put the mass due to water over 10 multiplied by 100 and we got our percentage of water crystallization so uh, the last part to go is to look at the x how do you calculate the x and if we're doing that calculation i like to use this formula this is the formula mass in grams all over mr is equal to number of moles and that can be easily transferred to be mass in grams per liter all over mr is equal to number of moles per liter so we know the mass in grams per liter and we know the number of moles per liter but we don't know the mr of the original crystal so if we're going to be doing those we've got the grams per liter there the mass in grams per liter is 10 so 10 over the mr would be equal to the number of moles per liter and the moles per liter is 0 0.0 432 so if we cross multiply here we can get the mr is equal to 10 divided by 0 0.0432 the reason the molarity of the sodium carbonate is the same as the molarity of the entire crystal is because for each entire crystal, you have one sodium carbonate in it. So it's a one is to one ratio, which is why we can take the moles per liter of the active ingredient part and say that's the same as the number of moles per liter of the entire crystal. Once we fill this in, we get the value of 231.48. So that is the MR of the entire crystal. And if we subtract 106, which is the MR of the active part, and then if we divide by 18, which is the MR of water, We get we get pretty much seven. So there you have it. The X is seven, and the percentage of water crystallization is fifty two fifty four point two.